Welcome back to London. The Syrian war has claimed an estimated 30,000 lives and has spilled across the border into Turkey after Syrian government troops fired across the border. I've been speaking to Ibrahim Dogus from the Center for Turkey Studies and he doesn't see an end to the conflict anytime soon. Turkey's politicians have made clear that they're not very happy with the Assad regime. I'm sure they wouldn't mind if it changed, but how far will Turkey's policymakers go to change the Assad regime? I mean, um, Turkey used to have uh, a volatile sort of um, uh, relationship with Syria before uh, Bashar Assad. During his father's era, uh, Turkey was unfriendly with Syria for a long time. But that was mainly because of Turkey's internal domestic sort of politics in relation to Kurds. So Hafez Assad was known to be supporting Kurds against Turkey by Turkish authorities. So they had um, very sort of um, tense relationships at the time. With Bashar Assad coming um, into the political scene in Syria, relationships started to change. So Turkey and Syria become really friendly. They cooperated really well against Kurds uh, in Turkey. So um, even uh, Prime Minister Erdogan and uh, Bashar Assad in Syria, they've had agreements to have joint cabinet meetings in Ankara, in Damascus, and so on. So things were going really well between two countries up until a few years ago. Then suddenly, uh, things started to change. So Turkey realized that Bashar Assad is a dictator and he must be replaced or he must allow democratic forces in his country to change the regime. This came, the, all, the, all this came after um, what has happened in other Arab countries in the region through Arab Spring. So Turkey um, had a really credible sort of uh, foreign policy up until they began to have sort of um, problems uh, with their neighbors. Initially, the foreign minister in Turkey was claiming that they will have zero problems with all their neighbors, which was quite, you know, it was applauded by uh, the community of the public in Turkey. It was also applauded by the international community, which was uh, seen as a sign for Turkey that Turkey is um, very keen on creating stability and, and so on in the region. But uh, things are, um, are out of hand now in Turkey. Um, Turkey um, will do its best to remove Assad from power uh, in Syria, but uh, in terms of means to, to use, it, they would not, um, uh, at this stage, uh, mobilize their ground troops on the ground, or they would not interfere uh, directly into S Syrian affairs. What they have been doing will continue. They have been providing a, some sort of safe haven for um, uh, Syrian refugees. Some are, some are allegedly uh, the fighters from FSA, from different groups within FSA who are coming over to Turkey, uh, finding safe haven, getting trained or finding the funds or reaching out to weapons and so on, then going back to uh, Syria to fight. So Turkey will continue to do that alongside other uh, countries in the region who are in, very interested in, in seeing Assad to go. So they will do that, but they will not be prepared yet um, to send their troops on the ground into Turkey or use their air, air power to attack Syria because at least uh, according to opinion polls in Turkey 70% of the Turkish population, Turks and Kurds, do not want um, uh, to see a, a, an escalating war with Syria. But what, do, is there anything that, would, that could change that point of view, say if the, if the attacks from Syria into Turkey become more heavy, do you think that public opinion could sway? Turkey will respond uh, heavily if any more attacks came from Syria. Uh, any more bombs lands in Turkey, in Turkey's uh, territory and so on. They will attack back, but they do not expect Turkey um, to mobilize its troops in full force uh, and attack Syria. Because um, in, in, it, the government in Turkey is a religious rooted government and people in Turkey are quite conservative Islamist people. So they do not want to see an attack on a neighboring Muslim country. So they wouldn't uh, want to see that. So it would be really difficult to change public opinion. The only um, thing that might change public opinion in Turkey is the possibility of creation of another Kurdish state or Kurdish autonomous region in Syria. Uh, because the bordering area to Turkey is again dominated by Kurdish people and uh, there are about 2 million Kurds living in Syria. Um, something if, if a Kurdistan regional government, as, as, as there is one in Iraq, 
could be established in uh, Syrian territory, uh, then that might be seen as a threat to the national sovereignty of Turkey by the public, uh, Turkish public, then there might be a reason uh, or they might, might change the public opinion. Turkey is very much a regional strength now, getting stronger all the time. Do you think they're going to work with other countries in the region to try and find a solution? There were reports that they were thinking of trying to persuade Russia and Iran to, to play a bigger part in the, the Syrian affair. Uh, that, that is a problem um, that Turkey is facing now because the, when we talk about neighboring countries or countries in the region, we're talking about Syria, Iraq, Iran, Russia. These are the main players in, in this issue. Iraqi uh, relationship with Turkey is worse, especially with the Shia-dominated regime in Iraq. Turkey um, has very tense relationships. The only credible partner to Turkey in Iraq is actually the Kurdistan regional government now. So that's, that's a positive thing for Kurds in Iraq, between Kurds in Iraq and Turkey. When it comes to Iran, Iran doesn't want Assad to leave power, like Russia. Russia and Iran are quite keen to see Assad stay in power for as long as possible. So they do their best to support Assad um, to cling to power, basically. And Turkey is trying to, is known to be trying to persuade uh, Iran and Syria and, and Russia, but it, it, it seemed to be not working. And um, it will, not, I mean, I believe that it will not work. So Iran would not be on the same boat with Turkey on Syria. Uh, so Russia will not be on the same boat with Turkey on, on Syria. So that is a big problem for Turkey. Turkey was expecting NATO uh, to come on board uh, as being a strong NATO ally or NATO member. They were expecting NATO to come in full force and so on. They called on NATO to come up with some either ideas or, or ways to deal with this issue. But uh, NATO seemed to be reluctant on um, doing anything practical apart than making statements. So Turkey in a way is left on its own. Turkey is, is very brave um, in, in this sort of situation because uh, you began with zero problems with all your neighbors, with many problems with all your neighbors, and you are left on your own in a way. The only support you get internationally is some statements from uh, foreign offices of international governments. But that's it. You don't get much other uh, support from any international government. And uh, Turkey is unlikely to get any support from uh, Russia or Iran in relation to, in relation to Syria. Uh, just to finish off, uh, briefly, do you see an end to the Syria problem, the Syria war? Not in the foreseeable future, because this, this conflict in Syria is not a conflict of Syrian authorities and the opposition to Syrian authorities. It is a conflict of regional powers and some international powers. It is more like a proxy war of uh, very big international players in the region. Uh, because of that, it is um, not yet uh, has, a, has an exit. There's not yet an exit uh, plan of anybody. Uh, there's no exit strategy for Assad. There's no exit strategy for the opposition. And the opposition is not a united opposition. It is funded by a different stream of funding from Qatar, from Saudi Arabia, from Turkey. So they are lords of their own region and they have armed men and, you know, in, their, in their ranks and they fight with authorities. Sometimes they fight with each other to, co to control regions. So there is no uh, united opposition against Syrian authorities. So unless you get the united op opposition uh, funded through one stream of funding, uh, through you know, controlled centrally by one organization which is pro-democratic, you know, pro-democracy, for pluralism uh, and which respects ethnic and religious differences in Syria, um, I don't see an end to Syrian conflict uh, in the near future. We'll continue to stay on top of all the big stories here on Duke's Coffee TV, but for now, goodbye.